Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed. I'm going to be talking today about the uh, using recurrent neural network to do action recognition um, by adapting the view to the optimal viewpoint subject to the recognition task. So the problem that we are talking about today is um, the input to the problem is RGB image from recorded from various viewpoints. Um, assuming that we can localize the 3D the 3D joints so that we can end up with skeleton viewpoints. The skeleton viewpoints mean that the, we end up with 3D skeleton data that is recorded from various viewpoints. And we need to do action recognition based on this skeleton viewpoint data. So we apply VELSM, which uh, hopefully can um, transform the uh, skeleton data to invariant skeletons so that applying action recognition uh, improve the results. Uh, rather than applying them to non-view adaptive data. So the outline for today's presentation is going to be starting by recurrent neural network overview, which is, and starting by the standard um, vanilla RNN, vanilla or recurrent, recurrent neural network. And then we're going to talk about the problem that it had, which is called vanishing gradient descent problem. And one of the solutions that's been introduced to solve this problem is called long short term memory, LSTM for abbreviation. And then we're going to talk about the view adaptive recurrent neural network, the motivation for this problem, for this structure, uh, formulating the problem mathematically, and uh, finally an overview on the system. Then we're going to evaluate the VARNN via asking two questions. The first question is can we just apply a manual pre processing on the data? or we need an end-to-end -end learnable method like the VRNN to do view adaptive recognition. The second question that we're going to ask is, do we really need view adaptive in order to do action recognition, or other methods for action recognition should be good, as good? Uh, la uh, lastly, we're going to do some qualitative evaluation to visualize the results of the network. Finally, in the outline, we're going to talk about the transformer network, which is another paper been introduced in 2014 uh, by um, Andrew Zisserman Group. Uh, in this paper, they are tackling the abstract problem, which is applying um, view adaptive but in 2D images instead of 3D skeleton data. So let's start with the RNN overview, recurrent neural network overview. In the Vianella RNN, they are tackling the. This is a standard. This is the um, simplest form of applying recurrent neural network on data. Um, as far until now, we are um, we've been introduced to several kinds of uh, networks, such as CNN or fully connected networks. Uh, both of these networks are called feedforward networks, which is which mean that the output only um, depends on the current input. However, when applying such networks to the data, uh, the time data or sequential data, it doesn't perform as well. Because in the time domain or in sequential domain in general, we need the previous information as well as the current information to determine the current output. So in the vanilla RNN, uh, the previous information has been uh, used as well as the current time information in order to produce the current time uh, output. Um, as you can see, for example, um, in here, in the second in the second time step, we are using uh, an output from the past step as well as the current time for uh, information in order to produce H1, which is the current output, the current time output. Uh, the vanilla RNN um, actually has a problem; it's called uh, vanishing gradient problem, which means that if we have important information been introduced to the network in the early stages, um, and we need this information in a later stage in the network. In this case, there's going to be a large gap between where the information is needed and where the information has been introduced. Uh, this problem is called vanishing gradient descent, which means that the sensitivity in the network decays over time. Um, there, if there is a long-term dependency uh, between where the information is needed and where the information has been introduced, the network starts to lose this information and um, no longer been able to use that. One of the solutions that's been introduced to solve this problem is called long short term memory, LSTM for abbreviation. In the LSTM, they are introducing a couple of new things like the input gate, the output gate, the cell, a um, couple of 10H activation functions. But the most important thing that they introduce is called forget gate, which actually learns how much of each time step should be let through. This way, we don't remember all, of, all what happened in the previous time steps, we only remember what is important. 
um, so we don't have long-term dependency problem um, as much anymore. Uh, now we're going to talk about the view adaptive recurrent neural network applying RNN in um, data that is recorded from various viewpoints, how to tackle such problem. So the motivation for, for this problem, as we just said, is data recorded from various viewpoints that is called view adaptive. We need to adapt uh, the view to get the best optimal viewpoint. Uh, so we need to transform the data to a standard viewpoint. One of the solutions to do that is to manually transform the data to a predefined viewpoint, um, maybe using a homography or um, geometrical transformation or any other method. Uh, the other solution is to end to end learning the optimal transformation, such as um, the, our, our work for today. So in such problem, we have two coordinate systems that we need to define. The first one is the observation coordinate system. And uh, the origin of this coordinate system is the center of the movable virtual camera. The other coordinate system is the global coordinate system, and it has the, or the origin of this system is the body center in the first frame uh, of the data, of the sequences. And this has actually been done to make it insensitive to the initial position of an action. So wherever I start, the global coordinate system is going to be having the same relative motion. Formulating this problem mathematically, we end up with a set of joints V at frame T. Um, so at frame T, we have uh, VT1 to VTJ, since we have J joints. And um, uh, in order to, so there is a transformation between the global coordinate system and the uh, observation coordinate system. This transformation has been done through two parameters, the rotation and the translation. If you are familiar with the affine transformation, there are actually three parameters that we need to account for. The third parameter is the scale. However, since we are handling 3D data, we don't really care a lot about the scale since it's already preserved in the 3D domain. Um, in order to represent the rotation as well as the translation, we need to represent it on the 3D, uh, in the three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. So for the case, in the case of the rotation, we have alpha, beta, and gamma, which are the um, rotation angles in all of the three D uh, in all of the three dimensions. One of the rotation, for example, one of the rotation, um, one of the transformation uh, for rotation rota transformation matrices for rotation is uh, R T Y, as they are mentioning in the paper, um, and this is their formulation. However, this is not the correct one. Um, the correct one should have should be a z, not y, and the negative should be uh, in here, not in here. This is not important. Nevertheless, you're going to find the correct transformation if you Googled it. Uh, the most important thing to remember in here that actually all joints in frame T have the same RT and DT. The reason for that is since we are handling data that is recorded from various viewpoints, the relative locations and rotations are, um, are the same. Uh, but the viewpoint, the camera, is the only difference and the only variable in here. So um, this leaves us with the question, how to set RT and DT? So uh, let's get an overview on the system. In this system, we have two parts. The first part is the view adaptation subnetwork, which learns RT and DT. In the RT, we learn three parameters, the three rotation angles, alpha, beta, and gamma. Um, however, since we are learning the angles, not the transformation matrices, we need to, um, to handle this rather um, more complex. Um, the other part is the main LSTM network, which is uh, the actual part that learns the action recognition from the optimal viewpoint. In retrospect, let's look into the first part, which learns the RT and DT. As we said before, the second part learns the uh, temporal dynamics for action recognition. Remember that we are learning this network end to end. So uh, in order to determine the optimal viewpoint subject to the action recognition task. So we are the loss function for this network is cross entropy loss uh, since we are doing action recognition. Assuming that we can um, call the part of the um, back propagation part uh, before the main LSTM network as epsilon, v dash, t, and j. So to learn the transformation metrics, 
uh, we need to apply the chain rule since we are only learning the alpha, beta, and gamma in the network. So in order to learn the transformation matrix, we need to apply the uh, chain rule. And um, similarly, we need to learn the DT, the translation, but this is much simpler since it's a direct relationship. To evaluate VRNN, um, we need to ask two questions, as we said before. The first question is, can manual pre-processing uh, be enough, or we need uh, an end-to-end -end learnable method, such as VELSTM? So to determine the answer to this question, uh, they ran extensive experiments via different um, manual pre-processing methods, uh, and uh, they outperformed all of them. So like in the sequence level translation, uh, the origin of the coordinate system, the global coordinate system, is the center of the body in the first frame. Uh, the frame level trans translation means that the origin of the global coordinate system is the center of the body in each frame, in the current frame. Uh, they have two metrics. Uh, the first one is the cross subject, which means subjects split into training and testing. And the other training configuration uh, is called cross view, which is cameras two and three for training and camera one for testing. The other question that they ask it to evaluate their system is, is view adaptive recurrent neural network is the best way to do action recognition or not? So in order to answer this question, they ran their experiments on three data sets, NTU data set, SBU data set, and CISO data set, and they outperformed all the other methods in all of the benchmarks. Qualitatively, they have several results. So this is the first one, RGB image and original skeleton viewpoint. Then after applying the end-to-end -end learnable method to extract the best viewpoint. So as you can see, they're actually extracting better viewpoints such as this example. So this is much more descriptive to the action than this, as well as in here, this is also much more descriptive to the action than this. The other qualitative evaluation, they ran it against the manual pre-processing and as you can see in this example, so in here, this is not really descriptive of the action, but this is much more descriptive as well as in here. This is more descriptive than in here. So until now, we've been talking about using um, LSTM to handle 3D skeleton data. What about applying similar network to do um, view, view, view adaptive uh, recognition, but for 2D images? So this work is called Spatial Transformer Network by Max Juderberg and Andrew Zusserman in Google DeepMind at 2014. Um, they actually applied a similar network, a similar structure to 2D images. So in their, in their work, they have four parts. The, the first part is U, which is extracting feature maps, but they are view variant feature maps. So they are different by the view, by the input view. Then they have the second part, localization network, which is uh, predicting the transformation parameters. And the transformation parameters may include any transformation that you think of, such as the elasticity or um, the cluttering or even sc uh, scale or um, rotation. Then the third part is grid generator, which is applying the transformation parameters into the feature maps um, and finally classifying the view adaptive feature maps using V. So for example, uh, the input in this network is going to be a an, uh, an image with, which has random translation, scale, rotation, and clutter. Uh, then the second part localize the object of interest um, with regard of by, by outputting, by predicting some transformation parameters, theta. And then by applying the transformation parameters in the third part, the grid generator, it extracts the object of interest and um, make it view, view adaptive, the last part does the classification. Remember that this network does that into single 2D images and it does fine grained classification, which is in concept, should, in concept should be similar to the action recognition. Uh, quantitatively, they ran several experiments. One of them was in CUB 200 bird classification. In, their experiment, in this experiment, they show um, the results or the impact of applying the spatial transformer part, four parts of spatial transformer network versus only CNN without spatial transformer, and they have um, quite improvement because of that. Qualitatively, uh, they have several examples that shows how their network handles uh, uh, transformations such as elastic distortion, 
uh, and rotated, translated, and scaled as well as rotated, and they actually extracting the object of interest quite well. To conclude, uh, we presented today a problem that given skeletons from different viewpoints, uh, we are trying to predict the transformation parameters to the optimal viewpoint subject to a specific task, such as action recognition. Um, thank you.